at the TNMVS. My name is Marta and I'm a project manager at Cisco and these are my teammates. Hello everyone, I'm Anukrati and I'm a DevOps engineer with Continental Automotives. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Holly and I work in the logistics industry, currently in tender management. Before we get on with our app, I wanted to say a few words about our stakeholder. Um, Mountbatten Vocational School is a vocational institution that has been serving the community for over 40 years now. Um, and they provide vocational training to students with disabilities, uh, which prepared them, prepares them for employment in hospitality industry. And the curriculum includes food preparation, food and beverage service, and housekeeping operations. The problem that we found while talking to the MVS team was that due to limited funding and manpower, the MVS team, st they're still using a manual system to register and manage student data. Basically, the manual system is a combination of Excel sheets, paper ledgers, like the one in the photo, and hard copy documentation, which makes it extremely difficult for the team to retrieve and process data. Our proposed solution to this problem was to create a school management system built in Ruby on Rails, which would automate and digitize uh, their record keeping and report generation. That would help produce the workload of manual filing and referencing. We identified two types of users. The first one is the principal, who would be the super admin of the application and have access to all the features. The other user would be the teacher, who would have access to students' data, would be able to edit it, etc., etc. All our features would be centered around the students' records. And now handing over to Anukriti. Thank you, Marta. So before we delve into the application, I'll be taking you um, across the project workflow to have a better understanding of how we actually develop this application. So as you can see in the side, we started with the requirement gathering. We visited the campus, talked to the clients, and looked at their current system to have a better understanding of what the problems that they were facing. Next phase is the designing wireframe phase. In this phase, we took help from Gia and Emily, our designers, to generate the wireframes, which gave us a very clear idea of what our app should look like at the end of the day. After this, we moved on to the database design, basically to understand the relationships and the dependencies among different entities. And as you can see, the beautiful drawing we have here, it shows what all different entities we have, the admission data, the particulars, the education, the file attachments that we need for every student, and how we managed to create the database. After that came the actual development process of the app. We started with the story selection. So the story selection basically means that all the requirements that we gathered initially were broken down into bite-sized features which we could tackle individually. This is a tool known as Pivotal Tracker, which we were introduced to for the project management. And suppose I am working on a feature that as a teacher, I want to see a list of classes on the page when I log in. So I will go to that feature and say, start. So my teammates get to know that I am working on this feature now. So that is a good way for us to communicate. Next, we moved on. Um, sorry. After that, we start with the test-driven development approach, which was absolutely new to me, or to all of us, I guess. But our coaches gave us a very good understanding of what test-driven development is. So basically, we start by writing a test case or a scenario. And then we start with the development of the code, which makes that test pass. Right? <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right. After that, um, once everything passes locally, <laughs> we push that code onto GitHub. GitHub, OK. 
I hope you people are aware of GitHub. Okay. <laughs> so from GitHub, the code is picked up by Travis, again, a continuous integration tool, and by Code Climate, which actually checks the health of your code, how well you're writing the code. Now in this picture, you can see the Code Climate is giving you a green sign. Yeah, the code is good. But Travis is giving you a red signal means something is amiss. We've made a blunder there. So we need to go back into the development cycle, fix it, push it again. After everything is green, we deploy it to Heroku. And that is when our stakeholders are able to take a look at the features that we've already developed and either approve or provide feedback which we include in the next cycles to come. Also during this development phase, we did mob programming. Mob programming is wherein we all as a team work on the feature together on a common sh uh, screen like this. So whatever we are typing in is visible. And later on, we moved on to pair programming, wherein we had a one-on-one -on -one session with our coaches. This part gave us a lot of understanding and clarity on the topics that we were working on. So thank you, coaches. OK, now, after we've seen all this, I'll hand over the mic to my teammate, Puri, for the demo of the app. OK, thanks. Hi, everyone. So uh, I'm going to be showing you the demo of this app. OK, so as Martha mentioned earlier, there are two types of users for this application, the principal and the teacher. So to start with, I'm going to be showing you the principal's journey. So this is Ernest. He's somewhere in the audience. Uh, he's the principal of MVS. And what Ernest wants is to be able to generate reports uh, for his student data because he needs to submit it to government agencies. And the second thing that Ernest needs to do is to be able to sort students into classes at the beginning of every school year. So currently, he is do doing all this manually. So what our application can do is help to reduce his manual workload. So I'm going to be switching to the demo now to show you how he can generate reports and sort students into classes. Thanks. OK, so once Ernest logs into his account, So once Ernest logs into his account, he can see a full listing of all the students who have ever attended MVS, and he can get a bird's eye view of the main important information, such as the gender, disability, medical condition, the main point of contact for the student. So if he wants to filter this data, he can do so by selecting the academic year. So let's say 2017 and the corresponding class, maybe class 1.1 food and beverage. And once he get this fil gets his, this filtered data, he can download it as a CSV file for his reporting needs. OK, so moving on to the next feature, which is uh, sorting students into classes. So if Ernest goes to the admin tab uh, and clicks on the manage school classes link, he can see a list of all the classes that uh, are av available in MVS. So let's say if he clicks on uh, class 1.2 housekeeping, he can see a list of students assigned to that class. So if he wants to edit this class and add a different student, so he just added Maureen Crooks, updates school class, and it's updated. OK. So this concludes the demo portion of the principal's needs. So now I'll be sharing the teacher's journey with you. So this is Yami, a teacher at MVS. And what Yami wants to do with this app is to be able to manage student records and related data and attachments digitally, 
because she's currently doing that manually with paper as well. So I'm going to switch to the demo now to show you her teacher dashboard, the individual student record, and how Yemi can add and edit student records. Okay, so once Yemi logs into her page, she will see a list of all the classes that she is a form teacher of. So for example, if she clicks on housekeeping, she will see a list of students assigned to that class. And if she wants to go into more detail about that particular student, she can click on the plus symbol. Or she, if she wants to see even more detail, she can click on the student name. And this is a full listing of the um, students' details, such as uh, parent particulars, internship records, any remarks. So if Yemi wants to be able to edit this student, she can. I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> so say she wants to edit the medical conditions, she can remove hyperactive, and she can add maybe ADHD, and maybe, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so maybe, uh, say Vivian was sick for one day and she has a medical certificate, so Yemi can add a file attachment and say others, maybe MC20. And then she can select the medical certificate and update the student. I assure you it works. <laughs> yes, <Yay>. okay. <laughs> so you can see. <laughs> so you can see under attachment details, um, there's a medical certificate here now. So this is really uh, currently right now what um, Yemi needs from the application. Uh, so this concludes the teacher's demo. And now I'm going to be passing on to. Uh, Marta? <laughs> yeah, so um, our goal for those 12 weeks of boot camp was to address the most pressing needs of non Latin vocational school. And while we really wanted to add a few more features, it wasn't really doable in such a short time. We do see a lot of potential in this app, though, and there are certain things that we would love to add. For example, attendance and grading system, which would allow the teachers to check attendance and add grades without using a pen and, a pa and some paper, just use, a, use their own mobile devices. Expand user access rights and perhaps add a few more roles, such as a caseworker or the school psychologist who would have different rights to those of the teacher and the principal. We would love to add a more advanced filtering option so that the principal could fil filter the data by age, medical condition, etc. And last but not least, audit trail, which would allow the principal to see all the changes made by any user within the system. And now, we want to share a few things about what we've learned during the bootcamp. Again, my name is Marta, and since my background is in literature and publishing, I'm probably a pretty unlikely tech bootcamp applicant and participant. Uh, what I learned during the bootcamp was that you don't really need to have lots of technical knowledge to begin, but you need to prepare for a very steep learning curve because the more you learn, the more you realize how much you don't know and how many things you need to learn. Um, I found that it's very useful to have a clear goal ahead of you and this is why the bootcamp was so fantastic because we were all trying to achieve the same thing during those 12 weeks. 
I also think that it's very important to try to impress yourself with those new skills and not other people. Like, do not compare your skills to the skills of other people. Just try to grow and be proud of what you've learned so far. The one misconception that I had before I started my journey was that, just like Shirlane said, um, coding is for geniuses, for math geniuses. And I thought that this is such an elite industry. But the longer I am in this community, the, the more I see that it's full of self-taught individuals who are just passionate about solving problems and coding is just one of the tools that they use to solve those problems. Uh, what's next for me? Um, I was lucky enough to find a job in technology even like long before I, I started the bootcamp. So while my position at Cisco doesn't really require me to code, knowing my way around web development definitely helps. And the bootcamp has been a great conversation starter during industry events. And since my professional background is in project management, and the bootcamp allowed me to see the, all the back end of digital project management. I'm really hoping to use those skills in my current job. And now handing over to Perley. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm um, Perley again. Uh, I used to be a graphic designer. Uh, that's what I studied in college and I freelanced for about four years after that. Uh, now I'm in logistics, I work in a combination of tender management, project implementation, and corporate communications for about three and a half years now. And now I'm transitioning into programming. So I guess a misconception I had about programming was that it was a lot of sitting behind a desk, writing code by yourself in the dark, but it's actually a lot of planning and preparation, and like Maggie said, very collaborative. So that was a nice surprise. And I guess um, advice to newcomers to programming would be that it's not easy and honestly it's all uphill from here but if you have mentors um, it does get smoother uh, but even with the right mentors there's a lot of self-studying and discipline needed so be prepared for some hard work uh, for myself personally I am looking for employment in the front-end web development and I think it's a pretty natural step to take given my background in graphic design uh, because visually I have an understanding of how things should look and now I have a basic understanding of the back end. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to putting these skills to work. Okay, so Anu next. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, I'm not sure how valid applicant I was for this bootcamp because I have a master's degree in computer science and I worked in the tech industry for a few years but after the birth of my second child and when my husband moved to Singapore for a new job I took a break in my career to spend some quality time with my family but during this break time you know I also realized how much I was missing my work life the freedom I had, the interactions I had, that was all missing from my life. So after the break, I wanted to get back to work, but it was very difficult. Numerous reasons. One was that I wanted to move to a new technology away from the one I had already worked and was scared of trying out things. You know, how do I approach with a new technology? But my takeaway from this boot camp is that do not be scared. Plan, take small steps at a time, and you can overcome any hurdle in life. My advice to newcomers would be to stay hungry, ask questions, and seek answers. Don't stop. This platform, Tech Ladies, gave me a wonderful opportunity to network with people in the industry and learn new things. So I'm looking forward to go on enhancing my skills and be a part of many such events in future. And we as a team would like to take this opportunity to thank Elisha and our coaches, Michael and Tongwe, 
whose support was innumerable. Without them, we would not have been able to do this. So this brings us to an end of the presentation, and we would be happy to answer any questions you people have. Thank you. Anyone has any questions on uh, journey, learning, uh, you know, collecting information, trying to you know make paper oxidate? Questions? No one? Are you are you all awake? Right? <laughughs> <laughs> they feed you too much, give you too much food, you know, your sugar high, like crash. Oh, correct. All right, just explain the application well to them. They already understood. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Are you all just some speechless? <laughs> <laughs> Must be it. Yeah. All right, let's give them a round of applause.